Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot and really a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Let's see. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe at Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there, join the militia. Sorry, man. I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble. Thanks for tuning in hanging out with us. Chris McCullough leads the way for Bayheim's Army. With 19 points and another game winner, you'll hear from us and we'll hear from you and fan feedback. Uh, Bayheim's Army, they'll head to Dayton to take on last year's champs, the Golden Eagles, in the quarterfinals. We'll let you know what we think about that. But first, uh, some news on the recruiting front. A lot of fans really, 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 really bigly excited about Kyle Filipowski. Well, that bubble was burst today. And in a, in a, you know, in probably the worst way possible, I guess. You know, if you really want to get, be honest about yeah. it. <laughs> so uh, he is not going to play for Syracuse. He's going to play for the Blue Devils. Like, come on. Come on, guy. So, who picks them? Who <laughs> picks them? And, and Coach K's not even going to be there. But whatever. It's fine. Mm. It's fine. It's all fine. So, I mean, Joe, you know me, dude. I couldn't care less. I don't care. I don't care about yeah. Kyle Filipowski. Uh, he's not gonna play for us. Whatever, I'm good. What do you think? Good player. Good, but yeah, oh, absolutely. No good doubt. player, and I felt like we were kind of on his radar a little early. Uh, I believe he was a four star, but he was just rising so fast. And then as soon as he got that Duke offer, it was almost like, yeah, right. And the blue bloods started coming in, and it was like, all right. So uh, I didn't really expect to get him at that point, but early in the in the process, he did look like somebody we might have been able to get, but. Wasn't a surprise to me. Yeah, I mean. Rich get richer. The rich get richer. The blue bloods get blue bloodier. More blue. Right. Whatever. So, all right. We will get into the Bayheim's Army game, which was just a good one last night. I Mm. mean, it wasn't intense, but it was intense in a way. Uh, Wasn't it? Just a little. Just a little. Yeah. Uh, So, before we get into all that, of course, let us tell you about Spotify Greenroom. It is an app in the Android and iOS store. Look, you can go there and download the app, okay? Uh, you're going to need an email address, a username, and a password. That's all it takes. It's free. You can set it up. You can follow us on there, Cuse Militia or Sean Space Cuse Militia. And you can get notifications when we go live. You don't have to just follow us. You can follow a bunch of people. You can do uh, with in a range of topics. Everything from politics to pop culture to music to sports. Whatever you want to um, listen to, whatever you're into. You can even start your own thing. Okay? You don't even have to go on there to listen to us. You can, you can have people go on there to listen to you. What do you think about that? So um, it's the way we are going to conduct fan feedback. This coming football season, of course, we'll do the written stuff from Twitter and Facebook, but this will be a, another dimension. We've been trying, geez, for years to figure out a good way to get everybody involved. And we've been through numerous phone numbers. We've been through, I mean, just a couple different apps. And this honestly is the least, uh, this is the most, I should say, hassle-free way to, to get that done for you guys. And I just love the app. I think it's great. We go live. You get a notification. You can hang out in the room. You can request to speak. I can, I can um, bring you in, and uh, you'll get in a queue, and I can bring you in, and then uh, we can, we can let you go, move on to the next one or whatever. And like I said, you don't have to just listen to us. Listen to whoever you want, or start your own thing. Go to the iOS or Android stores. Download the Green Room app from Spotify. Thank you, Green Room. So, Joe. Um, Sir. Sir, uh, so look, a really well played, well rounded game, really for for there he is for Bayheim's Army, okay. And I keep wanting to do it and stopping myself. I've said Bayheim's Army five times without saying Syracuse, but the refs screwed it up, and so did the broadcasters last night. I don't know if you caught that show. 
Yeah. When they went to the when they went to the video, uh, uh, the screen to our monitor, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, it said Syracuse ball, which is funny because I want I keep wanting to do it too, so I thought it was hilarious. But uh, a really a really good game for Chris McCullough, obviously. Uh, Kiefer Sykes stepped it up late, and just a good game for the whole team. It got really chippy. It got really um, physical. And Bayheim's army was physical again, which was great. And we've seen the last two games um, that they that they kind of put these teams away really uh, through the physicality and just uh, running the court and the energy that they've brought. And um, just entertaining, man. Entertaining. Started late. Kept me up. Believe it or not, I made it to the end, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> it was... I was good projecting that I was I was projecting I was oh, projecting I was projecting that to be a struggle but it wasn't uh, it was just a good game you know ended up stomping them 69-54 really when it comes down to it so yeah um what'd you think Joe uh I mean again effort defense um uh, still a little sloppy in some areas oh and yeah I would like you know obviously there's certain times where again just Barking at the refs kind of got us in trouble and got us to where we were a man down on defense, stuff like that, where we kind of just got it was just know that the refs are going to have bad calls. And, you know, and I know it's frustrating, but got to get back. But um, again, to be able to score 69 points, only have two players in double figures with uh, Chris McCullough, Kiefer Sykes, obviously Chris McCullough, player of the game, uh, tied for the lead in rebounds with seven and uh, 19 points. So, um, I mean, he was feeling it last night. Even sometimes I thought he took a couple shots that, you know. Ill-advised? Were ill-advised, quick shots, maybe, you know, shots that you'd like to see, you know, a little bit more movement or whatever. But uh, when you're shooting like that, then He's making you, know, you kind of just got to let. Yeah, exactly. So, but again, just a huge team effort. Seeing, uh, what, seven guys score at least six points. You know, it was nice to see Andrew White hit a couple threes. Uh, I think there was an and one and second one. But, um Devendorf seven points in his 16 minutes. Uh, of course, yeah. it, it, it talk about Chippy and uh, Mr. Chippy, Eric Devendorf. <laughs> it's <laughs> just it just doesn't fade. It just doesn't fade, and that's what I always loved about Eric Devendorf. That's what I loved about him last night, and the attitude, man. We talk about attitude just with the Syracuse Orange, and how badly. That team misses some attitude, and when Joe Girard does some of the things he does, sometimes it brings that extra little added, added oomph and, and energy to the team, and that's what Eric Eric Devendorf does. At what thirty? How old is he? 34, 35, something like that. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So he's getting up there, man. But they're, they're, he's getting the, he's he's making the most out of his minutes in the forty four. Absolutely. So, um, well, I think that's the point. I think like last. We've been seeing more and more guys making the most out of their minutes, you know. I mean, we went on that big run and, and kind of put it away there um, and got a good lead with, you know, the C.J. Fairs and the Andrew Whites and the Devendorfs. I mean, Tyler Lydon, those guys were in there making big plays with obviously Kiefer Sykes with, again, you know, 10 points, three rebounds, three assists, three steals. Uh, you know, he was all over the place. But, um, you know, again, that's what I was talking about with the tournament. You know, as long as whoever's in there brings the toughness, brings the defense, which they did. Obviously, there were some breakdowns and sometimes some mismatches. But for the most part, you know, held their own, always brought the, uh, you know, attitude and aggressiveness. But just being able to score, you know, I think that was the problem that you saw with um, always a brave. You know, Daryl Brown Jr. was as advertised. Uh, he didn't miss when it came to, a, you know, a shot wide open right around there in the free throw line. Um and Marcellus, uh, Marcellus Somerville had a good game as well with 10 points and five rebounds. But they Another, struggled to find Scudder. Huh? Yeah, I'm sorry. Somerville, uh, fantastic for his age, too. He's up there. 39, yeah. He played yeah. great. So I know that Patrick O'Brien is the big name that, you know, most people talked about and wrote about because of the fact that he was a seven-footer that, you know, went to the NBA. And, you know, whether there's injuries or bad matchups or whatever, he really didn't seem to, you know – he wasn't put really a, f- a footprint on this on this game, but Max Bielfeld really was the other guy uh, that had ten points and seven rebounds. The guy that was getting chippy with uh, Devendorf there, setting some hard screens and stuff like that. Um, oh my god! He was the he one that po- kind of provided. He was the one that provided, you know, um, that other spark. I know Nate Cannell, He had a couple threes as well, but they just really their second team really really struggled to find a score, and I thought that that was really the 
the biggest difference because all, always a brave was was playing defense pretty well. They were definitely playing aggressive, forcing the refs to to blow their whistle on anything. But um, it really was when you know we switched, you know, subbed out in the second quarter, and when our second teams came in, uh, that you really saw that gap go out. You know, yeah. And Kiefer Sykes again, just he had a great great game leading that second team full of Syracuse players and uh, I mean Tyrese Rice you know he had some good plays but five turnovers kind of struggled a little bit um you know DeAndre Kane only four points three assists three rebounds but you can just see the impact sometimes it just doesn't you know doesn't show up in the box score but you can see it on the floor with the loose balls and him just being in the right spots in the defense that he plays so um Really, the only surprise to me has been Malachi Richardson was going one point in the last two games after the the first half that he had of the first game. But, yeah. I mean, other, other than that, um, and a little bit of sloppy play from Tyrese Rice, uh, we were we were pretty good. And if, again, like I said last week, I mean, we had 34, or last game, we had 34 bench points uh, against 19. This time around, it was 34 to 23. Most, most of those came from the 10 points from Max Bilfelt, but... Um, yeah, we had 34 bench points again. So, and and we also had 18 points from the 14 tur- or sorry, the 12 turnovers that they had, and then they only had 13 points off of the 14 turnovers that we had. We had two more turnovers. So, and again, we uh, we won the the rebounding battle as well. So, well, we're we're losing. Um, that's the third game in a row. I think we're losing the turnover battle. I believe. Right, but you don't really you don't see the difference though. I mean, just no, see, you yeah, don't. we've had two more turnovers in the last because two games, but we've had more fast break points and points from the turnovers. It's because so, it's uh, really sloppy in the beginning. They they're not they they clean they end up cleaning it up the past couple games the past two games. Well, yeah, but I'm I'm just saying more or less like you know the points from the turnovers matters. You know, I mean, you can say you could have 20 turnovers, but if they don't score any points off of them, then it's no harm. Yeah, to well, foul. always a Braves they struggled to score. Right, they struggled at times. Game. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I mean they they did. We we got up by 17 at one point. I think I think it got down to maybe eight. At one point, but then it was, you know, it was so close to being over. I think that was in the fourth quarter. And once but they the, gave everything that they had just they, to get it they to absolutely eight, you know? did. They, I mean, they, other than Daryl Brown Jr., I mean, again, Max Bielfeld hit a couple threes. Canel hit a couple threes. And Marcellus Somerville, I mean, he worked for those 10 points that he had. So Yeah, and Syracuse, um, uh, basically on a road game, you know, with, right. with that team, most of those guys, except for one, I believe. Did all, you listen to the um, – Interview at halftime, going into halftime from the coach. I, it was on, I don't know if I listened though. Oh, it was great. Pope? Yeah. Kind of threw a little bit of shade at the, at the at fans. The, uh, the fans. Well, I, I missed it. Yeah. Well, he basically was said, he said something because she asked him about the fans and how the first halves went and, you know, what you got to do and this, this, and that. And he basically said that other than about three, Three and a half minutes of the first half, we couldn't even tell the fans were here. <laughs> like, kind of oh, threw really? shade because, yeah, if you th- I mean, because if you think about it, other than that one time in the fourth quarter where they started to come back a little bit there, give them a little bit of hope near that Elam ending or whatever, like there was only a couple times where they got loud, and especially in the first half as well. You know, I think we got up there, we got a good lead, and we kind of kept that there. I mean, I remember them getting real excited and getting loud, hitting the three just to get it to 10. And I'm like, oh, they just, we're, they're still down 10. Yeah. Still, you know, you mentioned Malachi Richardson, who had 19 in the first game, and you just think that he's going – oh, wait, no, it wasn't. Was it? Was it 19? Crap. I'm not so sure if he had 19, but – then it nonetheless he was i think i think it score i thought it was but anyway maybe it wasn't he might have i mean he had 12 i believe in the first like five minutes or first quarter either way either way like you mentioned he's got one one point in the last two games and and you know someone else who hasn't picked it up yet that i believe will is got to be tyler lyden at some point he's gonna have to uh turn it on because i mean we're all waiting Yeah, I mean, I thought he was he was active. He was into the game, you know, last night, getting four points. I, well, I mean, yeah, I think I still expected more out of him, being being that he was, you know, fresh out of the NBA for the most part. What is he, a year separated? Um, so I'm just looking here yeah. because I'm really curious. 
Malachi. Yeah, he, Malachi did head 19 points the first game. I thought you were looking that yeah. up for me, but you know, I'll do it every. I'll do everything over here. It's fine. It's no big deal. I got it. Okay. Here we go. I got it. No big deal. All right. Cool. Let's hear from some of you. Let's go to Facebook first. Steve M on Facebook. Um, not a fan of the officials. These guys are terrible. <laughs> team, team played well. Devo added energy, uh, difference in toughness. Keep it up. That's what Devo does. He adds he adds the, that little edge. He gives you that edge, and he gives mm-hmm. you that energy. And, um, of course, the toughness, even though he got posted up a couple times uh, <clears throat> on, on one trip down the court. But, uh, you know, that's, you know, that happens. You don't see it coming. That's what's going to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. But, but uh, the officials, look – there's a I, I'm convinced that they are told to call these games like this this loose they must be they must be uh, it's entertaining it's hard it's entertaining I don't think it was I mean I'm frustrated for them when I, I know watch. it's frustrating to watch I know it is it's very like and it really it's just like it's around the rim you know it's around the the shooting of aspect of it you know everywhere. what i mean like everywhere yes guys are getting knocked to the ground it doesn't matter if it's at the rim i mean who was it that got really was it sykes that got knocked down um toward, yeah, towards, sykes malachi to, richardson a couple times towards the uh, uh three point Rice line yeah fighting for balls and then you'll see some ticky tack something you'll be what the hell are you doing where were you 10 seconds ago you know, right. so it's just the inconsistency is what I don't like. If I'm going to my number one gripe in officiating period is consistency. So if you're going to call it one way, just just keep it that way. And don't just tighten it up like you, you got to set a standard early. That's, there was a moment last night where I thought it was going to end up getting out of hand. I mean, I, mean I, I remember texting you at halftime like these refs better get this yeah. reeled in here. Yeah, but don't you think, though? I mean, OK, a good time to do it's halftime. That's the latest, though, that you can do that. You talk to both benches, say, hey, look, we're going to tighten these whistles up. Just want you guys to know, starting to get a little chippy out there. We're going to tighten things <laughs> well, up. So that's the latest just, you can hey, do look, it, though. Halftime isn't just for the teams to make adjustments. Halftime no. is also for the referees <laughs> yes, to absolutely. make adjustments. Absolutely. Get, talk, talk without fans and without players and coaches around you and figure out how you're going to fix whatever just happened in the first half. And I don't really know if they even went to the same locker room together. Because they didn't fix really any Anything. of the issues that was going on, so I, I have to imagine it's it's. I haven't watched a lot of the other games. Neither have I, but they're 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 so, very close to that though. Though every game I mean, I've like, watched are, are similar to that, right across the board. So again, like I said, uh, you know, the last podcast I really wasn't alluding to this round getting like this, but once you get to the next round, um, you said quarterfinals, which would be the next, yeah, in Dayton. Yeah, yeah, in Dayton. So um, I just I feel like they're gonna have to definitely get some some <laughs> figured out here when it gets to the quarterfinals because once you get to the like again, you're halfway there now, right? There's only eight teams left. These players, um, they're they're tasting that that money. Yeah. So they're gonna be playing even harder, mm-hmm. and you know the refs are just gonna have to. You know, I don't know if it's just the quality of ref i don't know if you know no. maybe that's the that's the quality of ref we're going to get for the first three rounds and then maybe up up the ante a little bit and maybe pay a little bit for s- some better refs i don't know what you got to do but i mean something something's going to happen i think it's supposed to be like this i don't see how it's the quality i think it's supposed to be like this a little bit but anyway that's just i, I obviously mean, speculation Benheim's army's won so many games like why do i f- not remember it like this I don't remember it like this either. This year is worse. Well, this I think I mean everybody's kind of noticing it this year, so I don't know. I don't. I don't have an answer for that, and I'm just that's my guess that Mm. they're not this bad. That (laughs) that they are. That this is maybe along the lines of how they were told to do it. Uh, Donnie, we're never gonna get through this if if we don't shut you up. Donnie S on Facebook. Syracuse guys need to play more. White hit two threes. CJ played good. Leiden and Devo, a lot, en- lot of energy. Coach Pope sticks with four non qs players. Look, man, there's no doubt he's going to play the guys who are going to win this game or the next game, whatever, whatever the game may be. There's, he's going to play the guys that are going to win. The, the, the non-Syracuse guys, as they like to be called, our fans like to call them, um, they've been excellent. They've been pretty consistent. Right. You know, um, every game, 
And yeah. and look, well, it's I'm okay the with first it. game. The first game we wouldn't. Yeah, I'm okay with it too. First game we wouldn't have won without Kane and Rice and Kennedy. So yeah, the last two games, uh, the bench has definitely been better. There's been again more guys with more confidence that are coming off the bench and playing well. I think this is CJ Ferris' the second really good game in a row. Andrew, like Donnie said, Andrew White has hit some shots. Obviously, McCullough's coming on. Uh, Leiden is still going to get the, a lot of minutes because he's, you know, basically Chris McCullough's sub. Um, Devendorf has gotten more minutes the last two games. Like, I figured he might after the first round. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm minus Malachi Richardson, you know, he had that great first game, and then these next the last two games, like, these guys have been stepping up, and, and you've been seeing that the coach has been keeping these guys in longer. Uh, I mean, C.J. Fair was in the game for pretty decent. I think he was in there till until up until the Elam ending. So um, some of these players are gaining a little bit more confidence for the coach because people have to remember, the coach is the first time that he's coaching them too, you know, and we brought four guys in. They're there to win a million dollars. So and he's not a serious really, guy either. He doesn't have the orange blinders on, right? right? He doesn't exactly. have the orange glasses on. Right. He's trying to coach and win a game. Right. And um, as these Syracuse players are, are showing that they're more confident and can score and, and they're able, then they're going to get more minutes. So, But we know kind of who the top four guys, well, five guys really with McCullough and who's going to be there in crunch time. McCullough's been the most consistent, I think, and I just look for him to just – I mean, I don't think he can be stopped right now. I think he's got a goal. He's, what, 25, 26 years old? And he's got a vision, and, and his vision is to get back in, in, into the NBA. And he's hoping oh, of this, course. And he's hoping that, which obviously I, goes without saying for most of these guys, right? The young, especially, right. The, especially that age, you know, 25, 26. Um, and he's showing that, you know, he's got the talent, but you got to think about the level of play that you're up against, too on the flip side of that just to play you know devil's advocate with that tim m on facebook just to piggyback off of what donnie said like the actual su fives played last night the uh no offense to no offense to the other guys but hard to watch a team with a bunch of guys that didn't play at su look i was there i was there that was last year though that was last year the one guy or two guys or whatever it was and 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 now i'm good i'm good i want to win i want to win uh, you know, Ryan Blackwell took a back seat this year for Coach Pope, and it seems to be working out. Like you say, he doesn't have the blinders on. He's going to coach a team the way he sees fit and obviously analyze every game and um, what he's done so far uh, with his rotations. I feel like he's done a really good job. He's done a good job. So, Yeah. I, well, I mean, I want to see these guys in the NBA, right? Yeah, so absolutely. I look at it like if Chris McCullough can't play in this tournament next year because he got an NBA contract because of this tournament this year, then that's cool. Like, right. I like that. You know what I mean? Like, so when it comes down to these kind of things, you have these guys that we talked about, the the other guys, the four guys. And like you said, maybe we will knight them into the Syracuse family if this ends up going through and we end up winning. But ultimately, I mean, I'd much rather – get a situation where we have a bunch of guys that can't play because they have these contracts making bigger money overseas or possibly NBA contracts, you know? So, um, I'm cool with sprinkling in these guys, um, especially these guys, the way that they played their attitude, the way that they've blended in and not made it all about themselves and really just a team and winning. So, um, I like, I like these guys and I like how it's, how it's turned out so far. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll finish up fan feedback right after this. Look, I talked about it already. I'm going to talk about it again very quickly here. The Spotify Green Rep. Go there. If you haven't yet, just go there. Will you just go there just to make us happy, please? And follow us. Make us feel better. Because Fine. it's quite it's quite grim. Okay? It doesn't take much. Get on there and follow us at uh, Q's Militia or Sean Space Q's Militia. And um, all it takes is a email address, a password, and a username. You go ahead. You can follow us. You can start your own thing. Do whatever the hell you want. You can go. You can peruse all sorts of things. I named the topics before. I'll do them again. You got sports, politics, music, pop culture, movies, pretty much anything and everything under the sun is in the Spotify green room app. Go there. Download it. iOS or Android stores. It's free. For crying out loud, it's free. Do you not have enough space on your phone for this app? I, f- I would find that very hard to believe. I really would. Go there. Now. All right. Okay, Mike D on Facebook. 
Uh, keep playing like that. They're going to win it all. Well, we'll see. I hope so, man. They're, they're looking good. They're looking good. But we'll, we'll, we got a we got a big bridge to cross first before we before we start getting our hopes too high. And we'll, right. we'll talk about that. Michael P on Facebook. Good to see them continue to win. Tough games. Keep it up. Yeah, I mean, you know, they 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 gain a big lead. They start to lose it. They hang in there and end up, um, you know. Squeaking out the win one game, and then the past two games they kind of kind of walked it. But uh, yeah, just just no give up, and obviously they know that how they got to play now after the first game. I think it's been a whole lot better with the uh, physicality of this team after the heart fire game. Was a heart fire, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is uh, at Mahirio underscore ten. I mean, how do you not like this team? Q's fans are getting to see McCullough's potential after being robbed of it in 2015. Sykes, what a hustler. Devo being Devo and just a complete uh, Devo being Devo and just a complete game all around. Love these additions in the squad. So much fun to watch. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, with McCullough, what did he play? 15, 16 games, something like that. <laughs> something like that, yeah. And it wasn't much. And then he goes in the NBA, and obviously I think everybody saw his potential and kind of a disappointment. I think, you know, what's crazy about that is, is it seems so long ago, but it was the season before we started doing this show. It was we were yeah. one year removed from the Chris McCullough year when we started doing mm-hmm. this show. That's crazy to think yeah. about. Yeah, and I was excited for the rest of the year for him. Uh, you know, I know that he he showed some – some good and some bad for those those uh, non conference games, but I thought that he was really going to hit a stride and really have a really good um, conference uh, season. And then that happened, and it was like, ugh. Yeah. So, um, at Q's Waterboy on Twitter, McCullough is an absolute beast, and there's nothing better than hitting the target score of sixty nine. I know, I know, as that's how my wife ended up with a bun in the oven. Now, I will just point out, as at James Curtin did on Twitter, is 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 I, I don't think that's how that happens. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. I think look, he meant to say that's look, what led to that. Look, but yeah, I, I'm not sure. Really, um, I don't know if I want to hear the story to that, but uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't happen like that? But with that <laughs> said, Facebook comment. with with that said, with that said, Tony. And water boy and water girl, Mr. and Mrs. Water boy. Uh, congratulations, man. I trolled this page. I have to stop for a second. I, I trolled this page. I'm like, is he, did his, is his wife pregnant? And yeah, it was July 10th. And it's because I hate Twitter so much. I miss so much. You know how much stuff we miss because we hate Twitter, Joe? Lots of stuff. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. I missed it. My apologies, Tony. Congratulations to the both of you. Congrats, bud. Um, that's awesome. So I'll never forget becoming a dad. That's the best. At one Kev Nash, he says, take, take one guess what city I live in. He lives in Dayton. I asked him if he's going. Kev's going. Kev's going to the quarterfinal game against the Golden Eagles. So he's nice. going to represent. So shout out to Kev for that. Um, Absolutely. It's, that's really cool to be able to see this team in your hometown, right? I mean, that would be awesome, Joe. They came to Raleigh or something for you, you know. It's more likely. Oh, yeah. they, they, it's more likely they go there and they come to Virginia Beach. So uh, most likely. But yeah. yeah, I'd go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I it's easy for me to see this right now. I would go too. I would. I would. It's yeah, so easy. I've heard that before. <laughs> it's so easy for me to say that. But hey. Uh. Um, all right. That's gonna do it for fan feedback. We appreciate all of you for participating with us in that. And we will move on. To Bayheim's Army's next game against the Golden Eagles, the former, the well, the reigning champions, really, um, from last year, they beat Autism Army, Army, eighty-eight to seventy-five. I'm gonna get my words. I'm gonna learn words. That's what I'm gonna do in between the next shows is learn words okay. and how to say them. Okay. Yeah, usually we do that so, in elementary school. But. Well, you know, uh, the only time I talk is during this show. Believe no. it or believe it or not. So. Okay. Um, so this team and, you know, I think, you know, what's the dude's name? The beer drinker, the big big guy. What's his name? Diener? Travis Diener? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's the main guy. No, he's not, but he's... winner last year. But he's great. 
That's a man's oh, man right yeah. there, right? That's a man's man. Absolutely. So, I remember him. I remember watching him. He was a great player. Yeah. Elgin Cook with 19 points against Autism's Army. Or Autism Army. That's, yeah, it's Autism <laughs> Army. Again, I'm going to work on my words in between shows. Uh, yeah. So he led them. He led them to that win last night. And that game actually was was pretty much, I mean, when you look back at it, it was pretty much Golden Eagles all the way. But it did it did give me some hope. Obviously, I was rooting for Autism Army in that. And that would have been cool, have Bayheim's Army versus Autism Army. And uh, obviously, I don't want to play the Golden Eagles, Joe. Uh, right. But they're going for back-to-back championships, man. They're motivated. They've got a pretty uh, stellar team. And uh, we, we mentioned a couple, Joe, but... Uh, Twenty-one and four is their overall record for the tournament uh, up to this point, and I mean, this is going to be the struggle. This is going to be the one where we're going to be puckered up. This is a pucker game right here. I feel like, and it could be. I think it is. I think it's a pucker game, and and if we get by this, guys, if we get by this, make we'd make it to the final four. I'm going to call it the final four because I'm not. Who cares? Right, they don't call it that. They don't even call it anything. They call it oh, they call it semifinals. So, with that said, Joe, what are we looking at here? What are we looking at with these Golden Eagles? We're looking at a, a team full of guards, and that's really uh, so. That's the one thing that kind of gives me a little bit of hope, and it doesn't mean that I think that we're guaranteed to win or anything like that. But I know last year they had some some big guys that uh, kind of helped their cause a little bit, but. Um, when you look at some of the main guys that they got, I mean, Elgin Cook, he's 6'5", small forward. Jamil Wilson, 6'7", small forward. Um, again, you spoke to Travis Diener, 6'1", I believe he comes off the bench. Vander Blue, 6'5", shooting guard. He played in the NBA. Maurice Acker, 5'8", point guard, but a great player, great shooter. Um, who else am I missing here? Oh, okay, yeah, Derek Wilson is a point guard, 6'2". He was good. Dwight Bikes, another one, guard, 6'3". These guys, all of these guys can shoot, but you're talking about two small forwards and then a bunch of guards, and the only guy that they have over 6'7 is uh, center, 6'11", Luke Fisher. So um, no doubt these guys can score. Uh, they have a lot of great guards that pretty much are like borderline. They were borderline NBA players in their – in their time, in their in their prime, you know, they they're those type of guys that maybe didn't get drafted but got a, you know, a summer league or they get into like the G League or something like that. A couple of them did play um, NBA for you know a couple seasons, stuff like that. So they're going to be able to score. When you look at their scores for the uh, for the whole tournament, I mean, they scored ninety four, seventy one, eighty eight. You know, we've kind of been in the sixties, so. My only thing is I don't know too much about the teams that they played and uh, the size that they have and all those kind of things like that. But when you look at the guys that we brought in, uh, you know, with the guards with Rice and Sykes and Kennedy and Kane and just, you know, their grittiness and their their talent of being able to play defense. And it's just, it just seems like they're built pretty tournament. Um, I think that that matches them up pretty well. I think it – is going to allow Sykes and Rice to be able to play at the same time out there. And um, obviously playing man-to-man, it could possibly pose problems. We might have to go small every little once in a while, but, like, I don't really see. I mean, yeah, one big guy with Luke Fisher. Other than that, I mean, it's it's going to be – to me, it's going to be tough for this Marquette team unless they just move the ball around to the point where they just get open shots and they just just, you know – play overall better than us but that means that they have to beat <clears throat> kind of our good um defensive players as far as the guard position and where some of those guys are uh the only thing with these guys really is that they're deep as far as guards and all that kind of stuff so it looks to me like when they take their first team out when their opponent takes their first team out they've been able to still continue continue to score at the same rate and the good thing is that we have been able to do the same thing in the last two games. So if we could take advantage of the rebounds and Keep it low um, scoring, take advantage of those to... kind of mismatches, you know, um, but they're going to be scrappy. And like I said, they're good. They're fast. They can shoot and um, they can definitely turn, turn you over. So, well, that's, that's the really, thing. that's it because we've been turning the ball over enough on our own and you got a team that can do it for you. That's a bad combination. So that's the one thing. 
I'd be worried about. But yep. uh, keep it keep it as low scoring as possible. Maybe throw in some, you know, let the clock tick a little bit or something. I, I mean, you know, you might have to change it up a little bit. You might have to change the dynamic a tiny bit. It's re- I love the fast pace running. I mean, McCullough, obviously, he's been doing a fantastic job for 6'11", running the floor. You know, right. um, and when you can get it and you can take it, take it. But, you know, to slow it down a little bit, I don't think would hurt, you know, uh, against yeah. a team like this. So, yeah. So it's just one of those things where I just don't know if with this team, they're built to win it all as far as the, the Marquette team. Um, but they definitely could if all these guys kind of. I mean, if they if they stay on oh, they fire, could. put put up the amount of points that they have, then absolutely. I just feel like you need a little bit more size when it comes down to. And you know, you know, with, with Carmen's crew out, Joe, like this is a big hurdle to pass before you start eyeing the championship game. You know, because mm-hmm. yeah, with, with the experience that Bayheim's army has, it's going to come into key, especially if they can get past this Marquette wannabe team. So. Well, and that's the, I mean, I wouldn't say wannabe. I mean, Elgin Cook, he came from Oregon, so that's really the one, you know, and he's been averaging the most points on the team uh, with Dwight Bikes and uh, Jamil Wilson right there behind him with 14 and 15, respectively. But um, they're they're a, a majority Marquette team. It's just I don't know if they have the size, and they, they're missing a couple of players they, they, they had last year. Who, but, who is, again, who is like, that? Who is Man, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just knew thought you knew. I just thought you'd knew because I mean, there's names here that I don't remember, and I was just wondering what the team was last year that they that they won with. And I mean, it didn't. It's not like they got lucky last year, but they squeaked out a couple just, of close ones last year too. Y- yeah, well, and you got to get a little lucky sometimes in these tournaments, you know. Uh, but the, again, you made an interesting point too that this is also. I mean, we we turned around and. We, we took four guys and we said, OK, we're, we're going all in to try to win this tournament. And, um, you know, overseas elite there, it seems like they're no more like like this was might have might have been the last year or last year was the last year. And was, now yeah. they're kind of finding their own way. Right. So they dissipated um, and went to other teams, it looks like. Right. And then you have I mean, who are the only other teams that have won other than overseas elite? Um, Carmen's crew, Carmen's crew and this out, team. and this team. Yeah. So, I mean, if we win this, then you're talking about... There's there's one more, though. I think there's one more. But they're gone, too. They're not. That was whoever won it first, the first year. Oh, it was a Notre Dame team. Yeah, that's right. It was a Notre Dame team, but I don't even think that that team is is out there. either. That was like 2014, I believe, or something like that. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, you're talking about if we win this game, then then there's going to be a new, you know... A new bully on the block, so to speak. That's right. To, uh, it's, it, 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 well, you're right, and it's all about going back to back because of what the the precedent that that overseas elite set during their stint. I mean, they they basically put up a dynasty <laughs> for those couple of years, few years that they were winning championships, and now we have some of them. I mean, um, what's his name? DJ Kennedy. He's got he's got four, right? He's got four championships. So yeah, um, you know, it's he's 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 been here, you know, and I think that's, yep. that could prove huge down the stretch. I do think Jandre that Kane has to, yeah, they were on the, both those teams together. Okay. The whole time. Okay. I didn't know that. I don't know about the whole time, but Deandre Kane's been there. Oh yeah. With well, he was at least there. a couple yeah. years. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, is this is a, a, this, I could be totally wrong about this, but I feel like the golden Eagles is the last big hurdle for Bayheim's army. So with that said, this is probably going to be the biggest game that they could play up to the championship, in my opinion, as far as as far as caliber of play. But, yep. um, Joe, we've been I've been forgetting to do this. So we got to do it. We got to do it. You know what I'm going to ask right now, right? No. Yeah. Okay, we got to do it, man. We haven't done it in 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 two in two episodes. So I'm going to go to you first because that's what I'm going to do. Uh, what is your score. We made, by the way, we made Michael do it. We made Michael do it, and then we never did it. So I'm just saying. I'm just you saying. made Michael do it. I just asked. I just asked. So, Joe, what do you got? 
What do you got? By the way, by the way, I'm sorry. This game in Dayton is at 2 o'clock on Saturday. If you didn't listen to the last show, the time has not changed. The one thing about the TBT, if you are curious about any game time of any game, they have the absolute most crisp, clean, easy-to-follow website. Uh, and and they are this thing is organized and it's just so well put together. Everything is on their website, uh, to thetournament.com. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, yeah, uh, for this one, I'm going to go a little bit higher because uh, even when you look at this past game with Autism Army, I mean, being a 13 point game, yeah, I still gave up 75 points. Um, so the pace goes a little bit faster with these guys you know, being all guards and being as deep as they are. Uh, so. Um, I'm going to say that it's going to be obviously a closer game. I think we have the lead uh, going into the Elam end ending. Uh, and I think we win by 4, 75, 71. Really? Okay. All right. 75, 71. And that's a really good score, Joe. I got to give you credit on that one. Maybe I should have went first. But, of course, at the, at, <laughs> at, at the rate that we're at and with everything – um, but to do with summer basketball, I cannot foresee Syracuse um, not getting further. Syracuse, see, I did it. It was bound to happen. Bayheim's army uh, not getting further to just top our summers off. So I'm going to say they win. I'm going to say it's a little closer. I'm going to say 70 68 Bayheim's army. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think I honestly think that the biggest. Um, it's going to be Chris McCullough again. I, I think, think Chris so. McCullough is yeah. on a tear, and seeing that there's only one guy that's six eleven, uh, and he can't play all he game. He can't play all so. game, and he didn't do very good uh, against Autism Army either. So, um, right, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, so yeah, he, I mean, he had two points, he, two points and one rebound, six eleven. Yeah. So I mean, if he. I mean, I'm just looking even at just the defensive aspect. I don't even care if he puts up a stat. If he can stop Chris McCullough from scoring, then that's going to help his team. Oh, Chris McCullough can score from all over the place, so he's not. He, and chances are, no. Uh, that's my point. Yeah. yeah. So um, again, it's just going to be. This is like, you know, and I know that there was an, an article. I don't know if it was Noons or whoever that put out something about, you know, Chris McCullough deserves to be, or to get a second chance in the NBA, or this is or that, or. You know, we must be talking about how he's playing and everything like that. But again, like to your point, he's still young enough and fresh enough out of the NBA. And maybe he just didn't get drafted to the right spot and get to the right team. Uh, but everything he's been doing since he left the NBA is it's been good. He's been uh, good at the leagues that he's played in, uh, almost dominant, really. And uh, this is just another... I mean, this is a wide open opportunity. This is almost a perfect spotlight. You're talking in the quarterfinals. This is, yeah, this is, this is, in, this is basically an interview. I mean, being, I mean, that's it. Yeah. You, you got to perform. Yeah. These guys won it last year. They're a number one seed. This is going to be, what is this the first, this is the first game out of the four on um, Saturday? Let me check. This is the second game. There's a game at noon after Shocks first Florida TNT. Is yep. going to be your noon game. This will be game this two. This is all on ESPN, correct? Yes, it is. And then the last two games of the of the evening, seven o'clock game and nine o'clock game are on ESPN two. Sideline right. cancer versus Team Twenty Three and the Money good. Team. Sounds like a good day of basketball. Huh? The Money Team, who up? Yeah, it does. The Money Team. This would be a good day to sit around and watch some basketball. If you haven't watched a lot of the other teams, it'd be a good day to do it. Uh, the yep. Money Team, who upset Carmen's Crew versus Blue Clock Blue Collar U. So is that your yeah, that's so. your prime prime time game? Yeah, I mean that's prime time prime time. But you look at Marquette won the thing last year, and now you have a, a stage in which you've already played well, and this is a perfect matchup for Chris McCullough to just add on to that resume and, and, and help that interview uh, and yeah. obviously add another game at least to the interview. So the farther exactly. he goes, and the more consistent he is, the better chance he has. So the more you win, um, the more you get to showcase. Everybody's yep. thinking the same thing. So Absolutely. Um, all right. Hey, we appreciate – uh, you guys tuning in. Thank you for hanging out with us. If you would, Absolutely. if you listen on Apple iTunes, go there, review the show, rate it. You know, five stars would be great. You know, we appreciate it. We appreciate all of you hanging out. We will see you next time. We will try to get back here Sunday like normal. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.